chaps two chaps came along who were believers in UFOs and their theory of how these things fly, flew oh excuse me uh, that could be my cousin phoning we've got an issue with my cousin nothing serious I hope <laughs> you could have one of those magnets uh, which, yes. is, which, which is north and which is south <laughs> They're all north and south. <laughs> yes, so you've got a ball bearing that is north and south simultaneously, yes. Yeah. Could, you, could you play, um, what's the word, marbles with those, if they were bigger? Yeah, of course you can. But they fly <laughs> apart from one another. I mean, that, I, I'm, not, I'm just holding it and it's going round. It's doing it on its own. Yes. <laughs> but possibly, oh. Yeah, we'll all join together. Of course. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Oh, I've got a little video about that, haven't I? I just remembered. Right, Fun with one. magnets. I've forgotten about that. Let me go to my um, web page, if, I, if, it's, if I've got enough resources. That would be... Um, not that one. That one. That, that one. Get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. So if I go to U3A, how do I do that? So that was getting in at quarter to three at fourteen forty three. I don't know what you can see at the moment. I've stopped showing, I think. I've also got that wrong. Start showing again. That, that, makes things, that makes things easier because I've got a, a, a hospital point that um, came through um, after you left at quarter to four, so I can pick you up at 14.43. Yes, uh, hmm. um, just when, when you get on the train, just tell, phone us to say you're on it. Okay. Um, uh, hmm. Okay. Well, you call me all I have to do. Yeah, okay. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, where are my magnetic poles are Fourteen forty three. Yeah. 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 So it's at thirteen twenty. He's searching for something. Yeah. <coughs> Fun with magnets. I'm trying to find. Uh, oh. Where's it gone to? Um, Maybe having fun with Max. Gone all together now. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, well, while, while he's trying to find that, I'd started off this story about two UFO people had come into a Plymouth Astronomical Society meeting and their theory on how this, um, how UFOs would fly was that the UFOs would have a solid metal core. And on one side of the UFO, you'd have a North Pole, and on the other, you would have a South Pole. And therefore, the lump of metal would be s suspended in the middle of these two poles. And that's how the thing managed to fly. I mean, what they didn't say, understand, was when you took the table away, the thing would fall to the floor. It wouldn't stay suspended. Ah, you can get material which will actually make it suspend, believe it or not. Yeah. 
could have looked at this before. <laughs> Where did I put it? Oh, magnet sun, I called it. Oh, there we are. Can you see this thing starting or not? Oh. Um, sorry? Right. Maybe. Yes, it is starting. This is one time uh, we did all this stuff at, at here at this house. Energy. Well, yes, it is. Oh, sorry. It, 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 it is and it isn't, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's, that's what's puzzling me. How is the energy? The magnetic field. I don't think I understand. Yeah. Oh, I should have said that, should I? Yeah. 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 You see, this thing here is a stack of magnets at the bottom here, and a battery, and a piece of wire at the top. Copper, I think it is, isn't it, Richard? Yes, it is copper. Yeah. Yeah, and it just goes around. Slide on. Yes, I do. Don't, don't say you haven't been warned. No. That's, that's no. a little block of magnets there. Several magnets. Uh, I see the lines of force then. Uh, oh, can you? Oh, that that, that <laughs> brain went <laughs> down there. Is that one mm. there? No. Yeah, I can. Oh, the white, the, the white bits. Really? Yeah. I, I can't find a way of pushing the middle out of that one. Yeah, those. Yeah. One can't get them off. Yeah. 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 They're not as strong as those. So, so this number, 52 and 42, are significant, yeah. yeah. And the end is something to do with like, the guests or whatever you call it. <laughs> <laughs> well done for investigating all this. It's great fun, isn't it? Well, sorry, once you start yeah. on the internet, all of a sudden you find more things, if you know what I mean. More and more oh. things come to light. You think, hey, I must try that, though. <laughs> Oh, that's the floating bit, isn't it? The levitation. Yeah. yeah. Sort of levitation, anyway. And the blue well, is... If you, if you actually look between the big one and the square, you would see it was levitating. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Are you doing video? Or... We are doing the video, Brian, yes, but you're not here at the moment. <laughs> Can you do one with the magnet floating? Where? Oh, the floating magnet in that one. Where would you like it? Oh, you know. Oh. <laughs> See, that's how the UFO worked, that one. And yeah, but if you if you remove the, what the what the uh, magnets are standing on, it falls to the floor. It won't sus be suspended in midair. Do what? If you remove the table, that the, the or the box that the, the device is standing on, the whole lot will fall to the floor. It won't be suspended in midair. It's suspended between. Uh, I can't point it out, but the top and bottom magnet. Yeah. That one and that one. Yes. Yes. And to adjust it, you've got that one on the top, which you're allowed to balance the two off one against the other. Yeah. So it does <laughs> float. If you don't do it, what it won't float. What happens if you remove the box that the whole thing is standing on? It Nothing. will not. It will not float in midair. It will the whole no, thing. Of course. Will fall no, it won't. Floor. You're quite right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a truism, I suppose. Right, is, moving on. Is, is, is that floating in midair? I can't see it at the moment. Um, let's put this at the top. I can't see what it is, but if if you let well, is, if you let go of it, it wouldn't stay floating. No, but the point is. You could, if you had those pieces of stuff, those are two magnets. One's a very small one, one's a very big one. But if you put a piece of that stuff there, you read them, it will float. And what's the practical application of these things? No, no. you think. <laughs> there will be. Uh, <laughs> there you are. Directed, huh? How about that? <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs>
starring uh, Lena, Richard, Terry and Brian, of the Onward group, yes, which is a different group from this one. We don't so, have anywhere near as many as we would normally, because this is the meeting we would normally have in the hall, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Well, I, I emailed 34 people, Richard. Oh. I must admit, I'm getting very fed up with Zoom, but there's not much you can do about it if you want to carry on. This is a switch try and, bike. Try and remove him this in a minute. So I can't lost track. No, this. I've still got it on there somehow or other. How far can you follow a compass needle? Um, well, I was trying to um, remove you, Mister, wherever you come from. Yes, that's there. I'm reducing some of my resources. <laughs> right. Um, all right, let's go to this one first. Yes. Um, <clears throat> right, this was the first video that I thought would be interesting. Um, there, there turned out to be a model of, um, as I said, modeling magnetism. And this is in the Royal Institute uh, buildings. And he's uh, an archivist, I suppose. And I, I don't know, he, he just leads the story. The Royal Society, I'm sorry. Your samples are precious, and turnaround time is critical to the success of your organization. A sensitive yet rugged. Hi there everyone, it's been a while, but finally we're back here at the Royal Society. And Keith, you've got an object for us today, haven't you? What's in the box? We do, it's a good box, isn't it? Uh, Peter. Uh, it's one. Business. Let's have a look inside. I think uh, we'll hear it uh, twice. Boxes, a little protective cover. Are you sharing the picture? It's protective. I was. I can hear it twice, though. So. Yeah, but you're not sharing the picture. Okay. At first glance, it looks what like... What was that uh, you said? Um, uh, You're not sharing the picture. Okay, well, I'll get around to it. Here, it says, but uh, somebody's, somebody's sharing something else. Is that? Did you say it was you, Ken? Yeah, I've got it on here if you want it. No, I've got it as well. Um, I'll have I'm to sorry. put the camera on it. But... That's all right, I can do it here. And I thought I was doing it, but suddenly I had it uh, twice. Yeah. Just out of synchronism. Right, let's let's roll again. I got the other computer. Yeah, right. Now, now where am I? Um, Thinks, thinks, um, share. That's what I'm trying to do. Share. One share. What well, doesn't it share? Oh, there we go. Um, here we go. Uh, I'll go back to the beginning with this a little bit. Opening boxes. A little protective cover. Yep. Can you all see that now? And it's protecting. Yeah. Look at yeah. One of I'll, magn I'll magnify you Take the box aside, Brady. There we go. At first glance, it looks like a topographic model. It looks like, you know, Mount Everest or something like that in the Himalayas. Mm. But if I read this here, it says, model of the magnetic surface presented in the discussion part two of the magnetic observations made at the Girard College, mm -hmm. Philadelphia, between yep. 1840 and 1845 by Professor A.D. Bache. Const and modelled by Ferdinand Engel, Washington, D.C., 1862. So Ferdinand Engel was the model maker, right? but the brains behind it is this guy, Alexander Bage. All right. So this looks like it's time. We've got 24 hours of the day, and these are the dates. So our peak looks like it's or mid-August at around 1 p.m. on some day here in the, in the middle of August. But then earlier in the day, it's right down there. It's sort of fluctuating through the day. Does that make sense to you all? Yes. I mean, I mean, watch this. Yes, it does. <laughs> but it's surprising, isn't it, that the the magnetism at the, at the surface of the Earth and one spot varies so drastically during the day. Yeah. Yes, indeed. I mean, this is why the North Pole is never where you quite think it is. Well. If it's going to be like this, it's going to be all sloshing about all over the place, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, we're wandering. It's all wanders all over the place. You could. Yeah. It, it, there's a trace here on wandering of the of the North Pole, <coughs> and it, it 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 moves considerably. I mean, it would move hundreds of miles. Right. Okay. Well, every year, that. every yeah. year, you have to get a new factor for navigation. 
Yes. Because yes, they yes. use the average of where they, or they've got to use where they expect it to be as well. But you. Just a minute. Can we, if you can, come back, can we come back to that in just a tick? Yeah. Um, I didn't know the magnetic field did that. So, it might fluctuate. So this is so just rapidly. follow the end of that. Really. Oh, and there's another scale here on the side, east, west, and some numbers on there. I assume that's the strength of the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. I like this because it's just very, very sculptural. It's gorgeous. Um, it's lovely, isn't it? It could be a piece of contemporary art. And this dates from the 1840s. Do you know what it's made from? Well, I think that's probably enough of that particular one, isn't it? Um, going back to um, what you were saying, Ken, about the yeah. pole moving about. Yeah. Have you any, uh, um, any concrete information? Yeah, there's a, a website there. If you look up um, magnetic poles, all right, and then you can, my... and it, it shows you where they've moved over the last few years. I'm just typing it in. Magnetic poles. Magnetic poles, and go go to down to magnetic pole, and then there's a. Yeah, I'll show you. Um, oh, oh, this is really, yeah. That's the. You're showing me something, yeah, that's it. Right. Okay. Um, As you can see the see where it, where it wanders to. It's in. Um, I'm trying oh. to get it on the. Which particular site is it? What's it called? Uh, I don't know. I just 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 googled it now, just quickly. It's uh, oh, I, I've got it somewhere. I, I traced it all out on a, on an I actual know. globe, and, yeah, and, okay. and started off and 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 oh, I've got it here. on the globe itself. I have it. it, on, I, have some, it I have it. Um, if I can share that with you, um, it's Queen, Liz Queen Elizabeth Island, I think, in in northern Canada, where it's uh, there, that's the one. You can see how it how it wanders about. In 1831 and 2007, yeah. in yellow squares, magnetic pole locations for 1590 to 2020 are circles progressing from blue to yellow. Yeah. Ah. And what happened, it, it, it suddenly speed, it was speeding up and there was a worry that it was going to actually flip because of the speed, the sudden speed of the increase in, in its movement. There was a concern that it might flip. Yeah, well, the next video is about that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, but uh, it didn't do that. <laughs> but that's the, that's, the, that's the one, yeah. You've got it there. 1903 to 2000. Um, yeah. That's the same, same definition. Is it that? It's the same as that. So it's quite a... a it, it goes quite a distance. I think it goes about 100 miles, if I remember right. Yeah, it's just surprising, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> We had to, yeah, but I plotted it on a globe and it was quite significant. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? And the kids, <laughs> the kids thought this was, you know, oh, well, 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 well. <laughs> yeah. The interesting thing about that is we had to fly over the pole. And when I say over the pole, I mean directly over the pole. With yeah. The GP, with the early GPS systems. Yeah. Plot where it moved. Yeah. Uh, and. We had to do it once a year because Cranfield were involved with doing it. But it was quite interesting because it was never quite in the same place when we came back the following year. No, it isn't. No, no. The GPS is a defined, uh, um, how can I put it, a defined point. The GPS yeah. north doesn't move. No. So the GPS is, it, it, it's again, it, when it was kept, first came out, it was a bit misleading, wasn't it? Because it didn't have the same pole. No, it, it, w, w84, I think, is the. Uh, yeah. I, I presume it was 1984 when the position of the pole was defined in where it was going to be, possibly. And they took that as a fixed point. Yes. But the pole, but the pole actually moved. So the magnet. So you've got GPS, you've got magnetic, and you've got true. Yes. You've got the three poles now, haven't you? Yes, you have. Which is <laughs> more confusing. You, you think you're solving a problem, but actually. In some ways, you're making it for other people, are you? Yeah. Actually, I've got on my iPad here, this is, the, the, there's a thing called, um, oh, how the hell's it got? Anyway, that's the that's the Earth's magnetic field. Lift it off a bit. That, that That's the actual fi magnetic field at, the, at this plate. It, it, this thing measures it All right. on an iPad. It's called Measures HD. And mm. it, it, if you look, let's see it's changing. Yeah, yeah. 
So that's what that model is. That model that they've got there are these changes, but set into a into a block. Three D, yes. Mm, and as you yes. as you move around, I've got all I've got computers and God knows what in here. That 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 will that the the local magnetic field will change. Mm. Mm. And as I alter the angle, sometimes it it will change as well. So that line is is the it, that line is the actual magne Earth's magnetic field at this point. Yes, right. So that, it, it's quite quite good this because it you know it, it, you can see and you can get a measure of what it is for that for that day. And also on there, there's a there's a um, there's a compass as well. Oh, right. What was that called? That, 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 that compass. Hmm. Now, what was it's the called, application called? It's called Measures HD. Right. And it's an app. Yes. Oh, of course it is. HD. Measures HD. I, I don't know whether you can still, whether you can still get it. You might be able to. And then you've got. Um, what have you got? You've got. Oh, it's quite. Yeah, it's a Tesla meter. Tesla meter, right? Tesla meter, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's the magnetic field in Teslas, and then you've also got a metronome, a compass, and a sound meter, all on the all on the same app. <laughs> so that it, it's quite 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 good, you know, for for the schools, for the, you know, for showing the kids. They could do a DB. That's the compass. Yes, quite a, quite a decent decent compass, and then a yeah. sound meter. Yeah. Very good. Right, we'll have a look at that later. I think. Yes. See if you can um, still get it. And I've waited a long time. I don't know where you can still get them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that one. Well, we'll have a, I'll have a look at that myself later on. Yeah. But I've got an Android, so it may not be um, maybe different. Yeah. May, may and that's the sound meter. Before. In decibels, you go. Oh, woo, woo, woo. we can hear your voice and see it, and see it as well. Yes, <laughs> I speak your voice. <laughs> anyway, walls it's a bit of a laugh, ears. isn't it? Walls have ears. Just remember that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, that was that one. The second one was the uh, the one about the. This is the one about the. Uh, oh. Yeah. Speak up, Malcolm. I can't quite hear. <laughs> right, move on to this second uh, video um, for this guy here. Now, it wasn't just in the oceans that people were looking Not very at sharp, magnetism. Is it? Magnetism was a popular thing to look at in the 1950s, and people were also doing it on land. And in particular, they were looking at magnetism in rocks. Now, volcanic rocks in particular form like this one here, this is a volcanic rock. Volcanic rocks form from molten lava, which erupts at the Earth's surface and then cools. And the rock contains little tiny grains of iron oxide. And when they cool, they become magnetized. <laughs> they become magnetized in the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. And then the rock itself. Can you answer me why they get magnetized? Because that's an intrinsic property of iron. Iron, cobalt, nickel, and uh, neodymium. Right, I see. But uh, presumably because they're in the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, the Earth, yeah, like you make, when you make a magnet, you stroke, you stroke a piece of iron with a, with a, with a magnet, don't you? And line yes. it up in the Earth's field and then stroke the magnet, stroke the nail, whatever, whatever with a magnet, and it magnetises the nail. If he heated that up and then huh? turned it, it would form a different magnetic north. Yeah, well, that's what that's the principle. That's why they realised that the Earth had flipped, the magnetic field had flipped. Yes, he, he did, that's what he's proven, isn't it? Yes, that's right. He's yes. showing up. Well, he's proven you can't have two south poles. I think. No, <laughs> that's he, the next. That's the next talk, Richard. Oh, that's the next. <laughs> yeah. Talk. Say, say. Same thing, really, isn't it? Well, similar, but not. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good way of putting it, isn't it? Compass needle. You can't have two of them, so yeah, you've got one of each. I can actually make it move. Yes. He's pushing it. He's pushing it with his other finger. So rocks can become <clears throat> magnetised. Now, volcanic <clears throat> rocks that form today become magnetised in the direction of the Earth's magnetic field today. 
That's what you would expect. But some magnetic rocks, or some rocks, were magnetized apparently backwards. Let me explain what that means. Here is a bar <coughs> magnet, and the Earth's magnetic field looks like that from a bar magnet. Now, if I produce this, this is a, a magic wand, which has another magnet in here, and this magnet can move around here. If I bring this magnet close to this magnet here, move it around, you'll see that the yellow end of my wand is pointing to the red end of this magnet. Now, oh, I stopped it, sorry. If I reverse the magnetic field in this sample here, this, supposing this was my rock with a magnet inside it, when I say it's reversed and magnetized backwards, what I mean is it's like that. Now, instead of the yellow end of my magnet pointing to that, the red end will. So that's what I mean that, yes. by being... I'll move on a bit. And if I show you this, how this works, I'm going to bring up this rock, which is like a tiny little magnet. Yeah, we know that as well, yes. In Britain. <coughs> These are from a volcano <coughs> in Scotland, off the west coast of Scotland, the <coughs> island of Skye. And they're from, that volcano was active about 50 million years ago. It's not doing anything now. These are old lavas. Now, the extraordinary thing about these lavas here is when we measure the direction of the magnetic field in them, they are backwards. The magnetic field is in the opposite sense from the magnetic field of the Earth. And these are much less magnetic than this rock over here. They're, they're very weakly magnetic, but this can still pick it up. Okay. Uh, as an aside on that, when we went climbing in the, uh, in the Isle of Skye, <coughs> there was a problem using compasses because the yeah. Gabbro rock was magnetized. Yeah, you can't use them. No. As he's saying, yeah, yes. No, <clears throat> it, no it's backwards. It he just hasn't got it the other way up. Well, <laughs> he what? Well, he's saying that the these magnets are reversed. That's, yes. But if he turned them up, turn them over 180 degrees, they'd be the right way. So what yeah. makes him realise that it's the wrong, the other way from what you'd expect? Yeah, I wondered about that. <clears throat> you don't the way you, it was buried in the ground. You're doing it in situ. You're not <clears throat> taking them, you're not moving them. You, it's as they lie. In the ground. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Uh, right. That's right. Awesome. You could, you could, you could, <clears throat> yeah. Well, he didn't explain why those rocks are in little cylindrical lumps like that there. Oh, they've cut them like very odd. Yeah, they drilled them out as far as isn't it? <coughs> yes, that's presumably, yes. And are we assuming that the molten, the fact that the rocks become molten allows the iron oxide, whatever it is, to, to then flat. align with the magnetic I mean, this one field? And then when, it, yeah. when it's cooled down, that kind it of... Cools. Yeah. It provides a permanent record, if you like. If I turn yeah. it over, it very mm. slightly the other way. By the way, I used to work for that company. I don't remember. The, yes, I remember those actual and meters. Have, oh, right, right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Measure the direction of you swap the scales, can't you? <laughs> so what are we... <coughs> Living genius, yeah. Some rocks are magnetised in the direction of the Earth's magnetic field, and some are magnetised backwards. Well, the next... <coughs> next advance in this whole business was to actually be able to date these rocks, find out how old they were. And in the late 1950s, uh, uh, some instruments were developed which could actually work out how old those rocks are by looking at the natural radioactivity in them. These rocks, as I say, are 50 million years old, and their magnetization is backwards. If we take other rocks from some other part of the world, Japan maybe, or America, or India, it doesn't matter, if they are the same age as these rocks, you find that they are also magnetized backwards. Mm. And if we find rocks which are magnetized in the normal sense of the Earth's magnetic field, all other rocks in the world of the same age are also magnetized in that same direction. So it really does look as though the magnetic field of the Earth itself flipped. That the North Pole became the South Pole magnetically, and that the South Magnetic Pole became the North Pole. And by dating these rocks, you could find out when that happened. And by about 1966, people had made a calendar of what had happened. And this is the calendar. What we have here is time. This is today, naught, one million years, two, three, four million years. And the black means that the magnetic field is in the same direction as it is today. But here, which is about 700,000 years ago, the magnetic field flipped. The Earth's magnetic field turned round. 
And here, just before one million years ago, it had flipped back again. And here it was reversed, and here it was normal, normal, I mean, reversed, normal, reversed, normal, and so on. It had changed with time. And what this thing tells us is when it happened. This is a calendar of when the magnetic field reversed. That's when it stops. It? So what's the significance in that other than <clears throat> you suddenly find you're going the wrong way? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, everything that depends on magnets would be wrong way around, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah, your, your no. compass will point the wrong way. You point the wrong way, point the opposite direction. Uh, is there any major issue with, with that? Or uh, you just have to turn the scale around at 180 degrees, wouldn't you? Well, if uh, you followed that video on, it does say that it didn't have any significant effect as far as he could tell. Did he? Yeah. Were, were there that video said, if it carried on, we, we yeah. stopped before we got to the end, didn't it? Yeah. I, it just stopped. I didn't know there was any more of it. You mean there is more of it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just wonder if there is any... trying to talk to you. From who is? Malcolm. Hi. Hi. Malcolm here. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes. I, anybody who's done any sailing will know that on the corner of any naval chart... Oh, it wasn't just in the ocean... But oh, the stop magnetism. it. Magnetism was a popular thing to look at in the 1950s, and people were also doing it on land. And in particular, Not me, they were looking think. at magnetism in rocks. Now, volcanic rocks in particular... Form that was him. That's the rest of it. Oh, was it? Oh, sounds sound like the beginning to me. Anyway, right. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Malcolm, you were saying. Yeah, if you do any sailing, you've got uh, obviously a, a chart. And if you look at the charts, there's a little a message uh, um, uh, which tells you that the uh, position of north for navigation purposes, you, you have to have a little equation to tell you what is what it's like. Uh, mm -hmm. And when the, the map was made, and then uh, uh, so so many micro radians per year, yeah. uh, you make a correction. So this is very well known to people who do any navigating with simple instruments. Yeah, you just correct put a correction yeah. in. Plus, you only put let uh, was it point something of a degree? It wasn't not not a great deal, but significant on a long journey, isn't it? I was, and then this, if you use old old charts as I used to use, yeah, it becomes quite necessary. Yeah, <laughs> otherwise it's expensive. <laughs> yeah, you, you, they used to swing the compass as well, didn't they? They used to say, uh, go along a fixed course. There was a fixed course, wasn't it, that the navy had in off the south coast, and they would steer the ship between these two points, and then. That would they could they could sort of calibrate the compass to make sure the compasses were were accurate. And I think they could move the move move the card, move the back to make sure they were they were, they were zeroed. Yeah, that's I think right. it was on the south coast somewhere. Wasn't it? <clears throat> there was a yeah, across Lime Bay, but the problem line. is was it Lime Bay? Yeah, the problem was, yeah. or it still is. That any ship has got its own is a magnet in itself. Yeah, it is. You, well, that's where you place your magnet. That's why you try and calibrate it out. Yeah, yeah, but that's where you place your your, your compass, isn't it? You place yes, your compass where, where where it's zero for the boat, and then you take the boat to the course, yes. and then you sail along that, and that calibrates the the compass for you. Yeah. There's another place up across Wales, across I can't think what it's called. There's a um, where they test the ejection seats martin baker have got a place out there which they also do it oh yeah it's between ireland and wales if that's the appropriate word for it oh, yeah really? but there they can actually track the boat more accurately that's the point all right L lambeda i think it is lambeda. Yeah. The, the thing that puzzles me is nobody has ever come up with an explanation of of the Earth's magnetic field, except that, I mean, the deepest hole is apparently in the crust, which varies from roughly four miles, is it, to 40 miles thickness? That's a solid crust. And I think we've only gone down about a mile or so, or the Russians may have gone deeper. Anyway, what they tell you is that, that 
there must be an iron core in the centre of the Earth, yeah. because there's no other explanation. Well, of course, it, they could. We just don't know, do we? But um, why does it flip from north to south? Why doesn't it sort of go around to the so that the equator becomes north? And, you That's know, a good question. Is it, is it it the iron core any, is there's no the rational core. explanation at the moment. So they give all these thoughts, and they have, of course, as, as with all science, it poses more, <laughs> you know, raises more questions than they actually mm -hmm. answer. But they try and try to gloss over that because otherwise they look stupid. But I know they're not. I mean, <laughs> you know, they're not stupid at all. But they, they, they that time humans admitted that we don't know all the answers. Well, we don't know, presumably, sure, what sure causes the, the ball, floating, floating ball in the middle of the earth. It's liquid. Floating in a gas. Yeah. That's it's why it can move relative to the outside of the earth. It's liquid iron, isn't it? And, it's, and the earth's not round. No, quite. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, a, a round ball in an oval, isn't it? <laughs> but it's, no, it's not actually... It's, it can't revolve or move evenly can it in a in a in a in a in a, a rotatory way sort of thing it it's in it's in an, an odd shaped enclosure so yeah, that, I presume yeah. it's like floating something in space surely the same sort of phenomenon it hasn't got an up and a day and it hasn't got a left and a right it's just floating in the middle of nowhere so you can spin it to any direction you want but it's in a, it's in a container in a way. It's in the in the in a container, isn't it? The yeah, iron is in. The container's is it, got no bearing on what it's doing. Uh, you only see that on the shell. outside of the container. But it's in the shell, isn't it? It, it it's a liquid inside a, a shell. So it's it it can't move evenly. If it was in a a completely round a round ball in a round shell. Yes. It could move evenly, couldn't it? But if it's a round ball in an oval shell, it can't, can it? Yeah. So maybe right. that is something something to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but the, the guy's analogy of, of flipping by pulling that north-south magnet out of its little stand and turning it upside down, um, yeah. that can't, can't really work, can it? No, no, that, that is really odd. No. It's a very bad analogy, quite frankly. How it's can it? What's happening, but it's not an explanation. <laughs> How can it completely reverse? Does, does the does the whole lot turn over? Because it's the, the middle turns relative to the crest. To the crest, yeah. Is, is it because of other earthly bodies, and when all the, all the other the the, the 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 other earthly bodies, that will be that will be gravity, won't it? A gravity will affect the iron core and the crust, perhaps in different ways because they've got different densities. So every so often, maybe there is a constellation or a, 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 a the, the other planets are in such a way that they cause this iron core to move and to flip. It must make a big bang, mustn't it? <laughs> Only if it hits the crust. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just just keep listening <laughs> if you're a big bang get your compass out and have a look <laughs> see what's happened yeah. well, <clears throat> but Jupiter's the biggest uh, effect on the earth I should think it's and the whole it is uh, the biggest effect on the whole solar system isn't it yes yes well apart yes, from it. the sun but when it, it affects, it is so massive that it affects everything, doesn't it? No, the, the and Jupiter, Jupiter has a huge magnetic field as well. Yeah. And even though it's a gaseous giant. So how do you explain that? Well, maybe, yeah, maybe that's something to do with it. You know, if the that sun is also changes. a magnetic ball in its own right, is it not? What? what is? Well, the sun oh. is. Yeah. Oh, the sun, yes, the sun is course. one yeah. big magnet, and because it's molten, it moves around, if that's the appropriate yeah. word for it. So maybe the, it's the sun that does it, yeah. Do you, do you think the north-south poles reverse in all these other planets that have mag magnets, the magnetic poles? Good question. I have to go and have a look. That's a very good question. Now you've got to drill a hole. <laughs> you go, go up there and drill a 40 mile hole. <laughs> yeah, big job, that. Yeah, Bozos and the, even Bozos might bulk at that one. <laughs> what, we need oh, to, yeah. what, what question do we need to ask Google? <laughs> um, 
Why, why does, why the flip? <laughs> Magnetic pole reversal for Jupiter. Jupiter, yes. Well, the thing is, he showed that chart with the black and white strips, which I'm assuming yeah. is accurate. You could then, with modern computers, have a look and try and find out what natural phenomenon occurred at those various states. You'd have to correlate them, wouldn't you? Yeah. You yeah, someone else an with... exact match. You say, aha. Yeah. There's an awful lot of data to put in, whether it's sunspots <laughs> or, you know, the position of the Earth at that particular day. But something happened at each of those, where it went from black to white and white to black and black to white again. Something obviously happened, and, and it was quite distinct, wasn't it? Like I said, we, we're not having a half and half or something undis, undis, um, indistinct. It's a complete reversal. Well, it doesn't um, happen instantly, though, does it? It so? takes several... Doesn't happen that, instant. No, no, it's several years, several million years, years interval. Yeah, something like that. Well, no, is it? Well, it was. It was less than that, I and it happens less. very quickly. There was an article about that. It happens in so just a few years. Yes. It's, it, 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 for such a big effect, it's, it's dramatic, really. Anyway, uh, found it. Why <clears> does <throat> the magnetic pole flip so often? <clears throat> well, I don't know, but I've got here a sun's uh, about to, magnetic field is about to clip, it says here, look. I don't know whether you can see that. I'm trying to run the video. Here we go. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, there's supposed to be some music, but anyway, oh, here. I am said NASA. What? Something big is about to happen on the sun. According to measurements from NASA-supported observatories, the sun's vast magnetic field is about to flip. It looks like we're no more than three to four months away from a complete field reversal, says solar yeah. physicist Todd Huxima of Stanford University. This change will have ripple effects throughout the solar system. The sun's magnetic field changes polarity approximately every 11 years. It oh. happens at the peak of each solar cycle as the sun's inner magnetic dynamo reorganizes itself. The coming reversal will mark the midpoint of solar cycle 24. Half of solar max will be behind us, with half yet to come. Hoxima is the director of Stanford's Wilcox Solar Observatory, one of the few observatories in the world that monitor the sun's polar magnetic fields. The poles are a herald of change. Just as Earth scientists watch our planet's polar regions for signs of climate change, solar physicists do the same thing for the sun. Magnetograms at Wilcox have been tracking the sun's polar magnetism since 1976, and they have recorded three grand reversals, with a fourth in the offing. Solar physicist Phil Shearer, also at Stanford, describes what happens. The sun's polar magnetic fields weaken, go to zero, and then emerge again with the opposite polarity. This is a regular part of the solar cycle. A reversal of the sun's magnetic field is, literally, a big event. The domain of the sun's magnetic influence, also known as the heliosphere, extends billions of kilometers beyond Pluto. Changes to the field's polarity ripple all the way out to the Voyager probes on the doorstep of interstellar space. Oh, when so there, you, there you go. <clears throat> yeah. So it's a big, yeah, a lot of effects all, all, all around that. Yeah. Why do, they, why do they flip? Why don't they just stop when they're at east-west? Because well, they're the be... South Pole magnet. They're <laughs> well, the South Pole magnets. <laughs> but the sun's composed of lots of little cells, isn't it? So maybe they all go together. If the sun's like Jupiter, then it's not all revolving at the same rate, is it? No, I think the start of that video showed you the bits moving around relative to one another, didn't it? Yeah. 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 The Wikipedia on this reversal thing. I don't know whether it's of any significance. It must well, be I they tried measuring the uh, the effect on Mars and whether you know the age of the stone makes any difference to whether they, Mars sees a change. Yes. Yeah. So they they got there. <clears throat> could, in theory, do it. I guess. I don't know. Perhaps they're doing that. Well, what I couldn't face, they were taking some samples that they're going to bring back to Earth one day, but they haven't decided when and how yet. 
2026. They're bringing him back. <laughs> no, they're, so they're saying they're not going to bring it back. And do, oh, sorry, what? 2026? Yeah. 2026. Yeah. They're yeah. just yeah. likely yeah. going to bring them back. That's when they're hoping to, yes. But they want to be on. They will have been picked up and mixed up, won't they? They want to be able to keep keep those. I don't know how they're going to do that. Hmm. They will have mixed those up, won't they? When it when it goes, it, it it's like a little grab, isn't it? And it drops it into a pot. Yes. And then somebody, those two pots are adjacent to one another. The magnetism in one will affect the magnetism in the other one. I don't suppose that. Yeah, it won't be. It won't be able to do that from that, will they? Perhaps they've got a magnetometer <clears throat> on there on the on this craft. I think they've all got all those spacecrafts have got magnetometers on anyway. Yeah, so they? maybe there's measuring yes. there. But I've yeah. just been looking on the on the internet for reversal of Jupiter's magnetic poles, and I couldn't find anything immediately. Um, no. it's something that must happen, I would have thought, um, on Jupiter and probably on Saturn and Uranus as well. Well, they're gas giants, aren't they? I know, I know. So well, maybe there's not that they've got they don't have the same. Do you need the solid core to make it do it? So a gas giant wouldn't have a solid core? No. Well, maybe Mars does it. I don't know. And, uh, G and Venus. Well, Venus is nearer the sun. It's much hotter, isn't it? As we know. Hmm. Because of the well, green In that case, effect. it might still try be trying to decide whether it's a north or south pole. It's a north <laughs> pole. <laughs> Haven't grown up yet. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's, oh, we haven't got very far with that particular angle of, of other planets changing their poles, have we? Oh. Pole reversal for Jupiter, that's what we want, if we can get it. <clears throat> I mean, the, the inhabitants of Jupiter must have a, a, an interesting time floating on gas. <laughs> pole reversal, that's what we want. Is that what I would know? You've got the wandering poles. Uh, I mean, if you're not there, how do you measure it anyway? Are we all, is there it's on Earth that we can tell what way the pole is on any particular planet in the first place? Yes. Mm. I don't know. Uh, Bit of a compass. Ah, of course. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. You'd have a. You'd have a you'd have a gyro cup. What what be advanced of a gyro compass then? Would that be far far more accurate? No, it's stabilized, so it doesn't move. It, oh, it just keeps in what? Oh, right, yeah, yeah. There's no no advantage there. No. No. No, and the a lot of the GPS systems or the inertial navigation platforms had a compass which was stabilized by the GPS. Believe it or not. Oh my God, but that's backwards, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's out of a loop. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> indeed. Yeah. You had to receive the signal, and that was when there was only about four or five satellites out of the 21 up there in, at that time when they were doing it. All right. Then they brought those ground stations in, didn't they? Tri triangulated it. Yes, indeed. And then that increased the accuracy far, far more, didn't it? Ah, yeah, but that, that you've got to go careful because that was... The Americans deliberately put a jitter on it so you yeah, couldn't yeah, actually yeah. navigate with it. Yeah. And only if you were a military did they give you the decode to get rid of the jitter. Because that was one of the ways. If America's going to go to war, you look for the you look for the uh, GIS systems being being degraded, don't you? Absolutely. And, that, and then you know that that something big's going to happen. Yeah. In uh, Afghanistan, and uh, they, they did they did it there, didn't they? Yes. The Gulf, the Gulf War. They switched yeah. it off. If they'd been canny enough, they would have. They would have. They would have known what was going to happen, wouldn't they? I mean, <laughs> quite interesting. We did a lot of experiments in Wales doing just that. What yeah, yeah, switching yeah. on and off? Well, affecting what the GPS. By the time it got to the ground and the receivers, wasn't pointing in the right direction. If I say pointing, if you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But we went up with a, like a big magnet for I don't know. A big coil. Yeah. And pointed it at the satellite. All right. But we had to get permission to do it. We couldn't just do it. The Americans didn't go much on us messing about with it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
I wonder what Malden were up to as well. Well, they were all in with us, so yeah. they were probably the same thing. On those airfields when they were doing those late that big laser thing. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and you had to think, yeah, do not cross, yeah. <laughs> or you'll get fried. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Had many a uh, midnight flight purely and simply to be in the right place at the right time. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> We've got this yeah. map of a magnetic model for 2015 showing the annual change of declination. So that's something yeah. that's not been mentioned at all, declination. Well, that's the that's the alteration for the compass. That's what the, that's the factor. That's the correction factor. The correction factor. thing you so put I, in I, when you navigate it. I thought it was the angle relative to the surface of the Earth as it yeah. goes yeah. vertical ang angle. Is that yeah. right, Malcolm? Yeah. That's what I think, anyway. Yeah. Pardon? That's what I thought, anyway. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, this is the variation of it in 2015, apparently, whatever that, whatever it means. Difficult to tell from that with no scales and things. Um, that came from a different. Is that that one? No, that's not easy. So what did you say? Go back to that. No, that's another one. <laughs> Go away. I've lost track of where I am. In fact, I'll stop sharing for a bit. I think <laughs> too complicated. Yes, I think years, that's right. Has been more than so the average is two hundred to three hundred thousand years, but at the moment it's twice that. I think that's why the why the worry. Why has it suddenly g grown? To so it, it the average reversal is two hundred to three hundred thousand years. Right. Yeah. But at the yeah. moment we're in. Uh, four or five hundred thousand so for some reason it hasn't flipped oh did not mm. it i think we well, should get to the bottom of this and hey this is this is serious <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm O'Reilly. yeah if you managed to read watch the second video it says it didn't make any difference when it changed last time well, that was 200,000 years ago. We, we weren't much bothered about compasses then, were we? Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> no, it's more, it's 400,000 years ago. That is almost a million years ago. I thought it was 700,000 years ago. Yeah, that's it, you got it. 800. <laughs> Any advance right. on state? 800,000 years, all right. <clears throat> we'll settle on that. <clears throat> Definitely not yesterday. No. Uh, no, well, they, had, they, had the load, they had lodestones then, didn't they? To come put to, to use as compasses? No, that They've was the Vikings. They've always had lodestones, yeah. haven't they? Yes, I know. Well, the Vikings had them. Yes, oh, there's, they a, well, there's a Greek one, isn't there? The, the Zakintha thing, uh, computer thing. It's yeah, I know. It's taken to bits now. What was that? That, that, that was a, a navigation device, wasn't it, that the Greeks had? But that's uh, only about two or three thousand two, two or three thousand years ago. Yes, quite recently. That's the earliest. That's the earliest navigation thing. I've got a video of the model of it. Yeah. It's rather fascinating to watch it work. I can't remember what it did though. Yeah, it does, it's, yeah, it's it's absolutely uh, unbelievable, really. The the intricacy of it, isn't it? Yes. Nobody's ever 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 believed that you could get that intricacy in any any mechanical device at that age. Yes, well, right. I mean, the problem was the clock itself, it, because you couldn't measure time accurately enough. No, no. You would tell where the sun was, but you couldn't tell what the time was. So you, you know, you do, you know, do, was it latitude, not longitude? Or something? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there were ways, there were ways, if you took into account the, the moon's position, but the, the sums you had to do were lengthy and doing it on a ship doing yeah. it on a ship was very difficult so yeah what had had calculators in those days <laughs> well, Harris's, we... Harris's clock was a solution to that <laughs> the what Harrison uh, oh, the clock. yeah they're from Greenwich yeah yeah, yeah. I've got the, the uh, nautical almanac somewhere with all the um, 
positions of the planets and good knows what. And we did this course on um, <laughs> navig navigation course on celestial navigation. Oh God, I got absolutely, absolutely lost. <laughs> it was so, <laughs> so bloody God. You're working all in. You had to find the stars in the first place, you know, find the right star, and then you had to plot its to plot its uh, its movement. <laughs> and if you were if you were walking on land and doing a compass course there, you had to, you had to alter the alter the the compass every every uh, was it every fifteen every fifteen minutes. It had, yeah. you had to alter it slightly if you're going to be really accurate. <clears throat> yeah. Were you it, using it seven figure like, logs? Still doesn't work. You had, to, you, had to, you had to alter the... If you were navigating by a star, you had to, you had, you had to make allowance for the time of about... Was it, I can't remember what it was now. Anyway, you had, to, you had to alter the... And aim off so much every, every hour. 24, yeah, we'd be a 24th, wouldn't it? 24th of 360. So you change that. Well, it change that it had any effect on Concord in that he can fly more on the speed of sound and went from... Should we say London to Bahrain or London to somewhere in America? I don't know where it landed there, but would yeah. that have any effect on it, I wonder? I mean, because presumably you just point the nose in the right place and hope that it gets there. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> Let's have another G&T. Yeah, <laughs> another bottle of champagne. Yes. What about in the Second World War when the, sh the ships had degaussing cables slung around them so that they wouldn't to set off magnetic mines? Would that stop their compass working on board? Yeah, yes. alter it. Yes. Oh yeah. My father was working on the beam bending. You know, the the, the, the Germans were going on uh, flying on beams, weren't they? They had a a beam, and uh, they flew along it. And he, he was up in the up in the Hebrides, on Solace Beach, and they had a big aerial there, and it it moved the beam, so that they went they went the wrong way. Uh, but funnily enough, the very first bomb of the of the war dropped on Solace Beach, so I wonder when he, whether they got it wrong. <laughs> but yeah, the very first bomb of the war dropped on Solace Beach in the Hebrides. And that's where the beam bending mast was on the yeah. on the beach. The base of it's still there. That's why they actually sent the bomber there to bomb it, of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you just make it a hell of a coincidence, wouldn't it? Yeah, killed a rabbit, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Poor old poor bugger. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So eight hundred thousand years. Right. Um, What's that? Creativity and the solar record, right? Yeah. There's a long explanation here, but I don't worry, it, does it? Processes can also be modified. Hours is without the. There's no liquid eye in it in the Earth's core. Creates electric currents, which in turn create the magnetic field. So while well, parts of the Earth's outer core are too deep, they can. All right. A hypothesis about is about. Oh, yeah, it's solar that. activity. Yeah. I don't know. That's all a bit, all a bit small. But this, this map of, might be of interest to see the uh, where the pole was. You can see it around the whole globe. All oh, right. Yeah. Even the equator. Look. Right, right, right over the far side there. Yeah. Enlarge it now. Yes. yes. Well, that bit I, that I measured was up in Canada there, between, along the islands. It went, and it went right out to to sea. I think at one stage. Don't worry, it's gone back this, again. These are the years in the past, at the top. Yeah. Um, years before present. So, before present. So if you could take these, you could work out, I suppose, roughly where this one is down here. So you could, you could have the North Pole on the equator. 
They are. Um, uh, oh yeah. That's during one of its flip periods, though, presumably. Yes, presumably that's a fairly short time down there. Yeah. Uh, but are, are the are the north and south poles the plane between them perpendicular to the plane of the spins of the planet? Is that why they tend to be as they are and not east west when they would be parallel to the spin? <laughs> <laughs> How are you getting deep? Can you answer that, Malcolm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's getting deep. <laughs> I wonder what this special about this particular orange one here. It doesn't. Oh, it says. Oh yeah, yeah. Meg, mega eruption of Phlegrian fields. Oh, the Phlegrian of, fields. Oh, yeah. uh, of Southeast Europe. A mega eruption. So it was a volcano. Yeah, it was the biggest eruption, wasn't it? And it covered lava fields for hundreds and hundreds of miles. This is all oh, these are these are temperatures, aren't they? I've just realised. Okay. Perhaps it's not the polarity. It says polarity reversal was a global event at the bottom. Hmm. Perhaps this map isn't showing what I thought it was showing. Well, perhaps it's just showing the temperature change when the magnetic pole changes. Maybe, yes. Oh, well, it's not worth looking at that map, I don't think, to be honest. <laughs> so, global warming is involved as well, eh? We've got to be careful. Well, yes, it's apparently so. <laughs> yes. That butterfly that took off in Australia, that's the problem. We, yeah, that, that flapped its wings and, yeah, taking right. the whole world up. <laughs> what, not <laughs> <laughs> a big butterfly. That's like if, if a man says something in the middle of a forest and his wife doesn't hear him, is he still wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I hate to say it, Alan, but I'm recording this, you know. <laughs> I only posed the question. I didn't come up with the answer. <laughs> but you're dead. <laughs> The fact that you even have it in your mind is enough to... to, 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 to... How dare you? Yes. <laughs> right, well, <clears throat> we've been going for one hour now. Um, is there much more we can say on this topic? That's a near, neodymium magnet. There oh, you've got, got a magnet, have you? Got that, yeah, that's a neodymium. What is it? These are the ones that are in um, in the wind uh, wind turbines. Yeah, that's, well, why they're, that's why they're so so crucial. I know Chinese have got all the, uh, and then these little, these little ones, my God, they are really, really powerful. Well, those are the ones that in we had the video just now. That, yeah, uh, and these, I mean these are really. Yes, I know. You know, really, really strong little mm -hmm. tiny weeny things. Yes, they are. How Which do you got... get those two apart? The, there's um, a that middle bit is a magnet, and I can push it up and down, but I can't get it out. <clears throat> you have to uh, slide it. Yeah, well, how do you slide it? You slide what, what do you push it with? I don't know. You, put it you have to anchor one, anchor one bit, wouldn't you? So these, these are. I can only get it out that far. Yeah, oh, can't. All right. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't it... be in there. It just got itself in there, and that's the end of it. You can't get it out. <laughs> can't get it out. I had a little toy which, which it was um. A little wooden pole thing with a little round, little circular magnets on it. Oh yes. And then when you you put the, the cir one circular magnet down and then slid another one on the on, on down the pole, they hovered. Yes. And then yeah. you put another one on, and they hovered, but the second pair hovered twice the distance of the third pair. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. right. two safe poles it pointing went, at one another that couldn't actually return round to get there. Right, eh? <laughs> well, if you've got two safe poles, they won't stick together. No, 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 no. no. That's what they were doing. Part. Yeah, so they were magnetised bottom and top. Yeah. And then you, you put them on. I've lost a little magnets now. It, it's a smutty little toy. It just, just, just levitates, you know. But the distance was the thing. That was to show the, the, the yes. decrease of the magnetic field. And then that's a little bit of, we just break, break the magnets up and show that 
when you broke them, the, the separate pieces still had a magnetic field. Like north, you mean north of the south? Like that. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I've got a thing that will show you that. that, that there's the there's the north one. That's two magnets, and then that's and then there's a single magnet. That's the you get the field from a single magnet. It comes out and right, right around in a loop, and then that's two. And we used to put loads and loads together. You can see it now. That, that's the magnet. And you can see where the rays of the magnet are coming out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we did it. That's the magnet I'm spinning round inside behind it. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what we did with it. And uh, or you could use iron filings like that, or you lose use little um, little compasses. You yeah. Put little, you put little compasses there. Put a dot north and south. Then move it along dot north and south, and you could do the you could draw the magnetic field. Yeah, that's that that's that. iron iron filings encapsulated in a piece of. Cellophane or something. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to do them in a uh, one of these. Uh, <coughs> what's it? You know these clear plastic thingies. You know the old plastic doing. Fill them full of full of iron filings and give each of the kids one, and then they could play around play around underneath. You know with a with a magnet. And yes. With a, with a, where the magnetic field was. Peter, can I can I ask a question? Because I think somebody will know the answer. Yeah, go on. Can I, well, um, why are some stainless steels like this tray um, magnetic? Which it is. It's got 18 gas on the back. I, I attach it to the barbecue by, by magnets. Whereas other um, articles made of stainless steel aren't magnetic. Because there's yeah. um. Uh, it what type of stainless steel. There's lots of different types yeah, of stainless yeah. steel. Yeah, but what is it that makes them uh, magnetic? Do you think with steel it would be mag uh, magnetizable? It's it? the mag amount of chromium that they oh, add yeah. to the steel that yeah. decides okay. whether it will be a magnet or not. <coughs> so, but I thought chromium was magnetic as well as iron. No, it's not. It's not? Oh, okay. No. Cobalt, um, nickel. Cobalt, nickel, iron. Oh, right. And then the heavy metal. All right, I go. I'm getting cobalt mixed up with chromium because they both begin to see. <laughs> yeah, cobalt was the yeah, one. Okay. Yeah. Why are the thing. magnets we're playing with called rare earth magnets? What does that yeah. mean? They're, well, they're very, 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 very powerful. Yeah, um, but why, why, what, so what? I mean, why does that make them rare earth as to think from not rare earth? Because there ain't a lot of them. <laughs> and, the, and the Chinese have got it all. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got 20 minutes of it. How many do you want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Chinese have cornered the market, haven't they? The well, East no, those, 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 those are all magnets. Yeah. Every one of those is a separate magnet in its own right. All stuck yeah. together. Yeah, like the, like these, yeah. yeah well, I think we talked about it and just before <laughs> lockdown and, and they explained that that actually these elements or whatever they are, these rare earths, are not particularly rare, but it's just no. very, very costly to extract them from the raw material. They're only present in small amounts in the in the in the ores. Oh, yes. right. Yeah. So you need a hell of a lot of, of, yeah. of activity to get them out. You've usually yeah. got to use loads of acid, and then that pollutes all all around. Oh, in in yeah. China, there's whole cities and 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 uh, villages that have got very very high cancer rates because they've yeah. got they've been extracting these me rare earth metals for what, such a long time why can you not just get a piece of ordinary iron and put it against this um, electromagnet and magnetize it well you'd have to have, a, have an electrical power then wouldn't you you take the power away you're making electrical power aren't you that would be a, yeah, it'll go around in circles, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah I mean, they're, not powerful, they're not powerful and small enough. 
that's why I asked the question as to why, <clears throat> why they were called rare earth magnets. But, yeah, because it's near Dimian, <coughs> there ain't a lot of it around. They only found it 150, 200 years ago in Sweden. Yes. In Italy, on the island of Italy. And, and, but the, it, it's present all over the earth, but only in very small quantities. But they need these very powerful magnets for the, for the, uh, the, um, wind, the wind turbines. Yes. You need to, you've got to have a very high, to make the electricity, to make the electric current, you need a very high magnetic field, presumably. They only uh, need those, those high magnetic ones in order to remove the gearbox that they used to have to have to yeah. spin, spin up the speed from the, the turbine itself to generate the power within the wind turbine tower. Now, yeah. with, the, with the stronger magnets, you don't need the, uh, the, the gearbox at all. So that no. means there's less wear and tear and easier to service yeah. and so on. Yeah, maintain and everything. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, did you, know, did you know there's a magnetic uh, Stonehenge? I saw, <laughs> I saw one yesterday at the Festival of Archaeology. Someone had done dug one up. <laughs> the magnetic. <laughs> no, didn't you? Didn't you see that demonstration of the? Uh, I didn't see that. The, the kids had great fun assembling a, a, a Stonehenge. There was a big flat flat plate, and they had all these stones in a box on the left, and they, you you pick them up and plonk them into the the spaces allocated. And they all had magnet. They all had magnets at the bottom <laughs> to hold them in place. <laughs> I love it. I like and that. <clears throat> They were yeah. like brick. You said that. Well, I said, well, why do they bother? Well, if you try to move it or try, uh, if the wind blew or you touched it, they would all fall down like a set of dom dominoes. You see, <laughs> so they magnetised the bottom of yeah, them. Yeah, all stood idea. up beautifully. It was, well, it was lovely. Yeah. <laughs> not, not far from the fudge henge. Yes, it's very similar. I, I asked if it was edible, but apparently not. <laughs> you got to go to fudge shop for that, haven't you? Yeah, 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 just yeah, outside yeah. the cathedral close. So yeah, the funny shot. <laughs> well, you could buy a stone edge if I were. You probably could. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure yeah, that tastes much nicer than the one I saw yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah. I think we've we've um, bashed magnetism about a bit. We have. Had a look at it and had a great fun. We've got yeah. some questions that we've raised, like magnetic reversals in other parts of the solar system. Yeah. Which could be interesting to do it, have a look at and find out. Um, and, uh, Boris, see what his idea is. Boris? Yeah, What's Boris will have an idea on it. <laughs> he'll, he'll sort it out for you. No problem. As long as it's, <laughs> yeah, as long as it's written in Greek, it's all right, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK, well, I'm going to close the meeting, I think, now, if that's OK. OK. Um, have, a, have a cup of coffee. Well, thank, yeah. you all for, thank you all for coming. And I thought we had another nice discussion. Yeah, we um, did. So I'll say cheerio for Just now. Before you go, Peter, do you know why I've been invited to the committee meeting? Uh, you mean oh, the committee meeting? Can't remember oh, committee meeting. I have no idea, no. You don't mean the memorial hall, do you? No, I, I thought he meant that for a moment. I'm going uh, there this uh, afternoon to okay. that committee Cameron, meeting. Though, we've got a committee meeting. But I'm not on the committee, but somehow they've invited me to the meeting. <laughs> Your expertise, you see, is they miss it, obviously. Well, take a minute. End of story. <laughs> take a pencil with you. Um, have, have you seen, have you managed to load the new site, Richard? Yeah, I don't yeah. like it at all. I reckon it's rubbish, but there you well, go. Well, that's it. Yes, I'm, I quite agree. Um, anyway, not to worry. Right, I'm just going to close the meeting now. Right. <laughs> so cheerio. Cheerio. Uh, cheerio. Bye. Cheerio. Bye.